All right, you've been working with maps and scales on maps and finding what's the real distance, if it's this far apart in the map and so on. We're gonna take those things and just go one step further in this section. And that's gonna be once we figure out that distance, we'll do something with it. Find how much time it would take, find the speed, something along those lines. So to do that, we need to know some equations and you probably know these from science class, at least I'd hope so. Uh, distance is gonna be speed times time. Our book, for the speed, they use the word rate. So they teach it D equals R times T. I figure speed makes more sense. So I'd recommend just doing the speed. If we're going to write this out as an equation, they'll all be lowercase letters because a capital D is density. So lowercase d for distance equals S, or sometimes they'll put an R for rate. I'm just going to do an S for speed times T. So distance equals speed times time. That's going to be one equation you sometimes maybe need to use. But sometimes you're going to be looking for speed. So we want to say, well, how do you find speed? Or how do you find the time? Well, if we were to say speed equals, if you look at this equation, if we want to get s by itself, s was multiplied by t, so we'd have to divide by t, and that would cancel this out. Then we'd have to divide by t over here. So if you just know that first equation, you can see speed then has to be distance divided by time or uh, lowercase s equals lowercase d divided by lowercase t. Speed equals distance divided by time. And again, the book, they're probably going to put an r in right here and say rate is distance divided by time. We could do that same thing. I wouldn't mess up your notes, but in case I lost you this last time, say we wanted to find what time is. If we wanted to solve for time, and this is the part I wouldn't mess up your notes, but if you wanted to get t by itself, you'd divide by s, and then time then has to be distance divided by speed. So I'll get rid of those. So time then is distance divided by speed. Or lowercase t equals lowercase d divided by lowercase s. So, all right, so we have those out of the way. Now let's go through and do some of these examples. Um, so use those rulers that you got in class, the photocopied ones probably that are laminated. Uh, that'll come in handy as you do the homework stuff. Um, so it says, example one, the distance from the library to your home is three centimeters on a map. How long will it take you to get home if the scale on the map is one centimeter equals two kilometers and you can bike 20 kilometers per hour? So I highlighted that first part because hopefully when you see that you know, oh, I need to take and write that like this. One centimeter, the distance on the map is one centimeter. It's going to be two kilometers in real life. And chances are that's going to equal another fraction. And they'll either give us a number of centimeters to put in the numerator, we find the denominator, or they'll give us a number of kilometers, we put it in the denominator, find how far it is on the map. But, all right, so this one. They say your home is three centimeters library to home. So this distance here, then, is going to be 3 centimeters. So we put that in the numerator. And they say, how long will it take you to get home if I probably should do this? Why are we doing all this? Because how long will it take you? Well, when they say how long, I'm thinking they mean time. So if we go up to our equation from above, time equals distance divided by speed. You say, OK. so. In this problem, they tell me my speed. My speed will always be units of distance divided by time. So I know my speed is 20 kilometers over hours. That goes there. Oops, 20, not 2. Kilometers per hour. The problem is you don't know distance. If you can't figure out what the distance is, then this equation here becomes impossible to do. So that's why they give you all this information. We're trying to find out what's the real distance. We know on the map it's 3 centimeters. But how many kilometers is that going to be in real life? And maybe I should have backed up even more and said when we did our ratios, it's always the distance on the map divided by the distance in life. So that's another way other than just looking at units. We covered that in section one. The distance on the map is three centimeters. So that has to be in the numerator. And that'll give us a distance in life. So sometimes people start down here, and then they say, oh, I need to find distance. Use the other numbers. Honestly, though, for me, when I see something like this, at least in this section or this chapter, all right, I'm going to use, when they give you that, you know you're going to have to find that. So, all right, let's go through and find it. All right, I'm going to put a little X in there, and I'm going to cross multiply and divide. 
So I have 1 times x, that's kind of nice, just 1x or x equals 2 times 3. So x then is going to be 6. And if we look at it as though the 6 fits right in there, then we could say, okay, I know x, my distance in real life, is going to be 6 kilometers. So about 3.5 miles, 3 and 3 quarter miles away. Well, if that's going to be the distance, I could take that six kilometers, and I could put it in right here. So how long is it going to take me? What's the time going to be when my distance is six kilometers? And I can go 20 kilometers per hour on my bike. Take and punch that baby into a calculator, and we come up with 0.3. So 0 0.3. Now units, does that mean it's like part of a minute, part of a second? Um, I can go through and show you in class if you want. I won't confuse people here in the video, but if you look, the only units that we have that are time units, and we're looking for a time, are going to be that right there, the hours. And if you have kilometers divided by kilometers per hour, the kilometers are going to cancel. Well, I'll show you now. So you have kilometers over one divided by kilometers per hour. Well, we learned earlier in chapter four that if you want to divide two fractions, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so hours over kilometers. And now that it's going to be multiplication, we can cancel things out. Those two cancel, and the only units left are hours. So 0.3 hours is a totally acceptable answer. If you wanted to take 0.3 and do it times 60 to figure out how many minutes that is, you could do that as well. Um, actually, we're going to have to do that. If Jack leaves at 6.05, when would he arrive home? Because it wouldn't make sense to say 605.3. You know, you can't add like a five minutes to a 0.3 hours. That doesn't work. So we're going to have to figure out, all right, um, 0.3 hours, how many minutes is that going to be? And you could do it a couple different ways. Um, perhaps the easiest for it making sense, let me maybe do this. Could I convince you? that we could do the proportions just like we have been doing. And we could do hours over minutes or minutes over hours. Maybe let's say one hour is 60 minutes. And you could do 60 minutes over one hour if you want to. But like in these other ones, the units have to be the same in the numerator, the same in the denominator. Well, we know this is true. We know this is equal. So we want to find an equivalent equalness between these here. But I don't want to find what one hour is. I want to find out what 0.3 hours is. So if I take and solve this problem here, it's going to tell me how many minutes are in 0.3 hours. So I multiply those two together. I get a 1 times x equals, and I could multiply these two together, and I get a 60 times 0.3. Conveniently, the right side just becomes an x, because 1 times x is x. So if I do 60 times 0.3, I get 18. And if we look at it as though the 18 could go right there in the problem, then we know that 18, the units, have to be minutes, like that right there. So I know that it's going to take Jack 18 minutes to bike home from the library. So if he's starting at 6.05, 6.05 plus 18 minutes, maybe write it this way, 18. It doesn't click over past 7, so you don't have to mess around with that, but really it's just going to be 5 minutes plus 18 minutes, so he'll get home at 6.23. So 6.23, that's the time he gets home. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And we have one last example to do. This maybe tells you something about my family. Yes, <laughs> this is the example, but you're running late for church. Um, we don't need to take the highway, but I had to make it into a story problem. So you're running late for church. Which way is fastest? You, we used to travel across town. I wasn't sure, do you take the highway and go out of your way, or do you take surface roads? So we want to figure out which one's going to be fastest. So if you think back at those three equations we wrote at the top at the beginning, we're trying to figure out the time. So we want time equals distance divided by speed. So time equals distance divided by speed. All right. So the top way, taking the highway, it's usually the way I recommend, is 8 miles. 
and average speed is 55 miles per hour. And you could go through and show how the units cancel like I did earlier, or you could just say, look, we're trying to find a time. I have three options for units here, or really only two. I have miles, miles, and hours. The only one that's a time unit is gonna be hours. So we know my answer will be in hours. And when we punch that in, we get 0 0.145454545. So point or zero, point 0.1, and the four five are repeating. So I'll put my line just over the four and the five. We could go, if we wanted to, multiply that by 60 or set up the proportion, figure out how long it is, but 8.7 8 minutes about. All right, then if we go through and do the second one, say instead we're going to drive down Leonard instead of jumping on the highway, five miles, but I'm going to have an average of 30 miles per hour. So if I do, what's the units have to be? Well, they have to be hours. It's the only time unit in the problem. Five divided by 30 gives me 0 0.1666666. So even without converting it to minutes, that ends up being 10 minutes, but you'll see the bigger number is right there. 0.167 is bigger than 0.145. Um, so the faster way is going to be the top one. So this here is faster. Taking the highway. That's it. Let me know if you have questions. Be glad to help. Thanks for watching all the way to the end.